you are jumping on, let me know um, so I can see you're there. I've had some technical issues just to start the day off, which means that I've now moved onto a different computer, which is super old. Oh, thank you, Andrew. I'm glad you can see. Can you see my screen, my sharing screen? Literally, my computer, my laptop's gone into a, a meltdown. Fantastic. So I'm on, I think it's circa like 1996, this, this uh, computer that you're on. So I look kind of probably old fashioned. Hello, Edward. Yay, you're here. Oh my gosh. Laptop has died. It's stuck on 10. Hi, Alex from Glasgow. The screen looks good. Great. You can see me. Everything's happy days. Oh, great, Jerry. I'm not even going to pronounce Kirkaldi. I don't know. Hi, Hazel. Oh, everybody's here. This is really, really nice. Nice to see you all. So a little bit of technical difficulty there um, in that I'm not on my laptop. So I'm just like, fingers crossed, this is going to be OK. So it's Saturday. Uh, let me know if you're jumping on where you're coming in from. Hi, Phil. Um, hi, Louise. Um, South Africa. Yay. South Africa is in the house again. Hi, Mark. So I hope you've had a good week. Um, Yesterday, I run a, a, I run a community and yesterday the internet was unstable. So that was a shocker as well. So it's not my week for things like that. So hi, Alicia from South London. Hello. And Craig, hello from Nebraska. Goodness me, this is awesome. We've got, we've got all kinds of people. Algeria as well. Hello, Ali. And hello, Joanne. So today's session, um, yeah, so if you're jumping on, just say hi in the chat. You have me for an hour. Um, and then we have Simon coming on and he's going to be sharing something um, exciting, no doubt. Probably mentioning his singing as well. He's getting really into singing. Hopefully you found him on Spotify. Simon with two eyes on Spotify. Get into his songs, make him happy. Um, so he's coming on at 11 and I'm going to talk today about starting your own coaching business because I think um, this is something that you can do if, and I'm going to share a bit about my journey and just share a bit about the things that I've done because everything's possible and sometimes I think you can think that you need some special talent to do stuff. I mean, um, in terms of, oh, I can't do that because I haven't got X, Y, and Z. And I just want to sort of share today a bit about my journey and how I um, set up my own business. And you can do it too, if that's um, exciting for you. But also, um, the other thing is, is I've been on a few times, if you've got questions or anything you want to ask in this kind of parameter uh, about business or issues in your business, I'm going to do a Q&A after Simon comes on as well. But also just pop it in the chat um, and I will answer your questions as well. Or if you've got any questions like, how did you manage to do that or that kind of thing. So, um, so yes. So hello, everybody who's jumping on. Hi, Graham. Um, and Uckfield. I don't even know where Uckfield is. I'm not sure where Uckfield is, but hello. So let's start. Let's see if I can move this on. Right. So you've seen this screen before if you're jumping on um today and i just wanted to share it because it's really to share with you that i'm not different from anybody else you know i am different from everybody else but it doesn't take anything to start off your own business it's it takes really really just that fact that you've got that mindset that you want to move forward with something that you've got a passion and you really want to do everything you can to move from where you are at the moment to where you think that you'd enjoy life and have a more fulfilled life. So I was a solicitor and I went on Simon's three day internet marketing diploma course. And when I was on it and when we were doing them in person, the picture at the bottom was like it was, we'd go along and I was one of those attendees at that picture. I don't think you can see me actually in behind, but I'm actually on the stage on that picture, but that's what I went along to. And I just thought, wow, I really, really want to um, see how I can put the things that I learned on that three day course into practice. So my background, I had done years and years and years as a solicitor, uh, all the law degrees, all the trainings, all of those kind of things. So I came from a completely fresh background. So if you want to start your own business today, um, you don't need to 
think that, oh, well, I haven't trained as a coach or I haven't done X, Y, and Z because I hadn't, I trained as a solicitor. And I went along to this course. And the thing that I think is really important that you look out for is the fact that you find something or you pursue something that feels really exciting to you because sometimes where you force yourself to do something, think, oh, I should do this because it might make some money or I should do the other. I think that's where you get the resistance and you don't move forward. So when I was on the course with Simon, I moved forward and with the concept of membership sites. So that's where I first started off because I thought, wow, this is amazing. Membership sites, this is a really great way that you can build relationships with your potential clients and your clients rather than having a one-off transaction. And the, that just stood out to me when I was on that three-day course. I thought, this is exciting. I'm, I'm like, who wants to just build, who wants to do business with someone who's only there um, once? Like, we've got that way when the internet came around and Amazon turned up and, and if you want to buy something, you just search and find the cheapest price and then you buy it that way but actually as time goes on you bottom out then and you can't really get any cheaper and so then consumers and people are looking for some other ways to connect with the people they're going to do business with and so the journey started off for me being really interested in membership sites and so from that perspective I thought right I'm going to learn everything I can about membership sites so when I'm telling you the story, I want you to think about how you could do this in your life if you want to change direction or if you want to add something to your business. So is there something that stands out for you? Is there something that feels um, exciting to you? Are you intrigued by something? Did someone mention a book and you thought, wow, this book could be really amazing. Let me look into it because it's about following those pathways and you follow these little steps and they will move you forward to the next the next thing. So. I started learning about membership sites and then I had this idea, I thought, right, I'm going to write a book about membership sites. And so I started doing research on membership sites, uh, spoke to Simon at the time who had a successful one. And then I got a mentor. So mentorship is really important because you are able then to connect with people who have done it before you. And so it will take you X amount of time if you do it on your own. But if you work with someone, then they can help you through the bits and do it quicker and share their experience. So that was the first step that I took. So from being a solicitor to thinking, right, I'm going to do something different. And I went on this three-day course because I was shown Simon on a YouTube video talking about internet marketing. So that was kind of my pathway. It was like watching an internet, uh, a YouTube video, which I didn't want to watch, uh, but I sat there like that. Oh, I've got to watch this video. And then Simon came up and I was like, oh, this is quite interesting. Um, and then I went on the course and then something from the course, I thought to myself, hmm, this is interesting, membership sites. So follow your curiosity. So if you want to start a business or develop yourself, follow your curiosity. Because I think sometimes we are always looking for answers outside of ourselves all the time. Like someone can tell us or someone to tell us, but actually you look inside and think to yourself, what is exciting for me? So in my case, it was membership sites. So I started on this pathway of membership sites. The next thing I did was I spoke to Simon and I said, I'd like to run a seminar and um, our membership sites. So that's the issue of, or that's the concept of doing a JV, so a joint venture. So Simon had the expertise and he had the working model of the um, membership site. I'm smiling because normally I'm on my tiny laptop, which is this big. And because of these technical issues, I'm now on a big Mac thing. So I'm, all I can see on the screen is Simon's face smiling at me, which is putting me off because he's right in the middle of my screen and he's quite big. My daughter got across with me because they had the school photos and the teacher picked up hers and I've got the biggest one and held it above his head and said, whose is this? And she said it was basically a life-size cutout of herself that I bought with her. And that's what it feels like. Anyway, I digress. So Simon and I did a joint venture and we did a how to make money from membership sites seminar and he marketed it for me. He did half the content 
And then all the research and all the other things that I picked up in the interviews of other people, I did the other part of it. And so that was a great way to move into a different area. So if you have um, something that you're excited about moving forward, say you want to get into the health and fitness um, niche, do you know someone who's already operating in that niche and could you partner with them and maybe put an event on and maybe bring your expertise and combine it with their expertise? So the reason for sharing the story with you is because I want you to know that there isn't any magic about it. I didn't have anything special. I just, just took the next step. And so there's an explanation of how things worked. So let me know in the comments if it's, any of this is resonating with you and if you do have any questions. Um, so otherwise I will carry on talking. So from there, I did the membership site seminars. I, I had the book published. So again, the book had a deadline. So in the middle of the screen below Simon and I is a picture of me and that's my book coach, Joe. So we set out this whole book, as you can see there, I spent a whole day with him setting out a new book. And I haven't published that book because I didn't set a deadline and I didn't keep myself accountable. So that was the, that's the start of my second book. My first book, I had the mentor and the deadline and I did it in five weeks. So that's another really important thing to think about when you're going through and thinking about how to set up your own business. So from starting there, I then just threw myself into events. So for example, um, the picture at the top is, there was one of me at Facebook, because I got invited to Facebook later on because I'd been in the community space for a long time and they wanted to learn from me. But this is all a case of just leaning into the next step that follows. And then I realized that actually it's less about having a membership site because membership sites are really just the tool you use. It's actually about building community and really building relationships with people. And that's how my direction kind of took off. So um, that is a little bit of a, an explanation of how I moved through from being in a completely different field to moving into something else. And, and the, the picture of everybody on the Zoom is my Friday like-hearted leaders where leaders come together and I facilitate a community. So you can see how you can do it easily. I wasn't a speaker at the beginning of this. Um, thank you, Edward. I started to wonder if I dropped off. I was like, well, everyone's dropped off. Thank you for answering. Um, yes, exactly, Edward. So first step is unlocking the door and then you walk through it and you take the next step and the next and so on and you trust the process. Totally, Edward. That is totally it. And everything you see on this picture is just to show you what can happen if you just lean into it and you take the next step. So, um, yeah, so there's all the bits and pieces. So then I went on and I worked with Daniel Priestley and ran his community. I tried out loads of software. Uh, I, I used Kajabi, I've spoken about this in the past, but I tried so many different um, softwares and and I told the story before about how I learned on Simon's course about using WordPress and uh, I thought right I'm going to build a website and I built the Spirits of Halloween website um, which I launched and then realized that Halloween is once a year so it wasn't a great business model however it added to the learning journey so this is an example of how you can move yourself through and develop yourself and do things you never thought you'd do so interestingly, yes, Halloween rocks. Excellent, yes, uh, Edward. So interestingly, um, all of this, if I was in a meeting at a solicitor's office, I would not really want to speak. However, because I was passionate about things, I ended up being on stage and talking events to all those people. And because it was something I felt passionate about and, the first time I spoke an event, I kind of messed up and I used to get feedback and I maybe said the wrong thing and I learned from that. So if you want to go and speak at events or do things, just have a go because, yeah, it just takes practice and just having the guts to get a go. So hopefully that page has inspired you that whatever I say is possible and I didn't start off as a speaker, I didn't start off running my own business. I'd, I'd just gone down the normal channels. So yes, Andrew, I'm still doing the podcast. 
series two is pending. Um, and um, yeah, I have some interviews lined up and I haven't done them yet, but yeah, I do have the podcast, which if you go to my website, you can link on there and listen to some of my podcast episodes, which are no doubt highly entertaining. I think I interviewed my eight-year-old daughter at the time on one. So, so there you go. So with that background, hopefully you um, can um, get a little bit of context. So the first thing to think about is what do you really, really want? I've been watching the Spice Girls documentary. Remind me, what do you really, really want? I want to zig a zig apparently. So if, you, if you're not in England and you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, Simon will be here soon, it's fine. So income, how much do you want to earn? Now you might think, oh, I need to earn 10,000 a month extra, or you might actually find that if you earned an extra 500 pounds a month, then actually it allow you to pay for things or go out more or do the thing. So have a real think about what you actually want, because you might be surprised at how much income you actually need. And when you are starting something off, if you um, have a job, like I had a job as a solicitor, you can do this as a side hustle. You can do it in the evenings, you can do it the weekends, all of those things, and see how it works in the meantime. So think about how much income you want to earn, because if you don't know what you want to achieve and you don't know, if you haven't set your goals, then it's going to be really, really hard to achieve them. Then think about how many hours you want to spend a week. So um, how much time do you have to put to it? And <clears throat> it's best to put an hour to something and get it done, as opposed to say, right, I'm going to do 20 hours a week and then not hit that target, because then it will stop the momentum. So about, I know this clips on my app, but it's something like 373 days ago, I thought, right, I'm going to do meditation every day. And because meditation is one of those things, you don't really know why it works, but it works and, and it, it, it's got all kinds of benefits. And I hadn't done it for a long time, thought, right, I'm going to do it every day. So I downloaded an app called insight timer which is quite cool and it tracks that I do it every day and some days I do it for a minute and I usually do it before I go to bed and um, do a minute's meditation actually I do probably the shortest I do is four minutes and some days if I've got more time I'll do longer in the day but now I've been doing it consistently for 373 days or whatever it is and so because I set myself a small goal, if I said I'm going to meditate an hour every day, it wouldn't have happened. But I just didn't. I just made sure that I did something with the app every day, at least a minute or two. And so now I'm over a year down the line and still doing it. So think about how much time you can give to it and, and, and what contributions you want to make. Like what do you want to make an impact in the world? Do you want to change something? Um, all those kind of things. Think about those things when you're setting it up. So I'll write it in the books. Let me write it in the chat for you. It's a good app and it's free. I mean, you can pay for it, but Insight Timer. Oh no, I need to put it to the all of you, not just the Tamaris. Hold on. Tamaris and attendees. There we go. Right, Insight Timer. Have a go with it. Take one thing from today. Just start doing it and see if you can get as far as I can. Um, yeah, meditation is awesome, really. So here's a picture. It's me. That's me when I was seven, I think. I used to cry at every single party. Uh, it was probably just too emotional for me. And then that's if you get the wrong clients. If you get the wrong clients, you're going to feel like me on that picture. So think about who do you want to work with? Because when you find the people you want to work with, it feels more like I do on the other picture, like sitting by a pool with your laptop, with your water bottle in Palm Springs, chilling out. So it's really important that you think about these things. Don't just do it for the money. So you need to identify your target market, like I was saying. Thank you, Edward. Cute and crying. <laughs> poor, my poor mother. Actually, I've got another picture here. This is me when I was even smaller. Yeah, look. See, which is I, could you tell it was me? This is actually a good trick as well. Have a picture of yourself on your desk when you're small. And if you get cross with yourself or don't think you can do something, look at the person and say, would you say that to her? Would you say to her, nah, you're not, no good. You're rubbish, you. You wouldn't, would you? You say, come on, Claire, you can do it. Little hack there. Um, yeah, this is the history stuff. Did you, <laughs> I don't know if Paul knew you were signing up for this. 
don't know if Simon's on, I don't think Simon's listening yet. No, yeah. I had messaged him earlier because I couldn't get onto my laptop. I'm like, are you there? So he can help me out. He's text back now. Hello. Like, I've done it myself, Simon. So what do I promote? What do I promote? I, are you asking me to promote something called? Do you want to buy something from me? Is that the question? What do I promote? I promote getting stuff done and living your best life and getting to your potential because I think everybody on this call, you obviously believe in yourself enough to get up on a Saturday and watch this and learn from it. So that is the, um, that is what I'm sharing. Um, what's the system in particular? You know something, do I have, do I have a, that's a question is it? So Paul's asking me if I'm promoting a system. So a system to get, well, si if you want systems, Simon probably got a system coming up at 11. This is the real nitty gritty of how you live a life where I no longer go to a solicitor's office. I haven't done for nine years. I hang out with amazing people. I do stuff on my terms and live a life that I'm really quite happy with. So that's my system. Um, and this is how I did it. And it's, and yeah, there's, there's no rocket science to it. The system is you take consistent action you put things into place, you trial them, you fail, you get out there, you don't just learn, that's the system. So that is my thing. So if you're looking to find um, your ideal um, audience, you can use Google. And if you want to go into online coaching, have a look, search, see who else is doing online coaching. So, so in this example, online coaching for weight loss came up with Daniel Harrod. So you can see straight away when you do a Google search, like what's he about? And it says straight away in the description, Daniel Harrod is an online fat loss coach. He's an experienced personal trainer and mentor to hundreds of men and women who've decided to stand up and make a change. So when you're looking for your target audience, be super clear. And the smaller you can get, the easier it is to connect with them. Because if you are too broad, then there's always somebody else. So if you're in the beauty industry and you just do eyebrows and you just eyebrows for you is the name of the business, which would be a rubbish name. But just for example, eyebrows for you, it's like, okay, I'll need my eyebrows doing, that's where I'm going to go. You know that they're not going to do all the other things. And you imagine that if they can just do eyebrows perfectly, they're going to be the best eyebrows you've ever had done. So, um, Yes, I don't know, what's the question? Do you think that we all know this really? You probably all do know, know it, but we're all looking outside of ourselves, aren't we, for some magic solution. And you've got, you've got these answers within, within you. So that's what I would say in answer to your question. Um, who was the question from, Paul? So when we are talking about, and if you're gonna set up your own online business, look at these different aspects. So use Google, see what's out there already. And look at this. So you go to this guy's website. I don't know who this guy is, but I was just doing this example. And you can see straight away, it's super clear how to win at fat loss. Now, if that is your goal, straight away, you are bought into him. This is right at the top of the screen and you get a place there to leave your details early on. So you can see how if you want to set up your own business and you're clear on who you're talking to, there's only a couple of steps you need to do to get into the conversation. I didn't know who this guy was, but if this was what I was interested in, it'd be super easy for me to sort of join his email list and then he would start to nurture me as a potential client. So if you go to his website and you're looking at it, um, um, you will see that he is immediately showing his credibility. So he does this through photographs. So he is um, showing where people have gone on the journey and the, and the pictures he's sharing as well is connecting with people he'd like to work with. So if I was a male and I was going to the website and I looked at these pictures, I'd be like, I resonate with that guy, David, and I want to move where he's been going. So this is really important. So when you're moving through this journey, it's about thinking ways to get credibility. So in my example of when I was talking about um, the early days and being with Simon, he had the credibility, he had the existing business model, all of those kind of things. So because he had that already, then by joining forces with him, him he obviously um, 
would he had that trust with his audience and so he wouldn't work with me if he didn't trust what I was going to say and obviously he in the early days he probably vetted my screen and my slides and all those kind of things and so that is a way to be able to move yourself forward on this pathway so I like chatty Paul don't worry um it's how I said I had this conversation yesterday with somebody and they said about um using email and text to um, speak to people and it's so difficult to interpret text as it is to if you're in here in a room with somebody so um, it's definitely difficult to read the chat and talk and answer the questions so um, but no I like chatty Paul if you've got any more questions just ask so when you go to this guy's website the clarity continues so straight away he says what would you like to do so if this is some niche that you'd like to set up and you'd like to work in this, this, in this area, think about what you want to offer to people and set it out as three steps, like online coaching, in-person coaching, and you can see straight away, that's what he does. So if you want to go online, you click on that button. If you want in person, you click on that button. If you're just there to browse, if you're just interested in what he's all about, just go to the blog. And then you can go on the blog and read a bit more about him and get to know him. So that's relationship building. And then another thing that's really important if you want to set up and do online coaching is having the confidence about you because people buy into confidence and sometimes, and you've probably seen this before, right? sometimes there's people who actually are very, not even that well qualified, but because they exude this confidence and they think you, you buy into it and you'll see these examples in your everyday life. So um, actually a funny example, a few weeks ago, I was staying at my sister's house and her friend had given her some, some um, eyelash dye. So you could dye your eyelashes. And she seemed really confident as she put it on. She hasn't done it before, but she practiced on my mum. And then I was like, all right, do it. But she was so confident. Like, yeah, I can do it. And I was like, but I just fell for it. It made me think about it. Because I thought, actually, if she was like, oh, I'm not really sure about doing this eyelash stuff, I might blind you. I probably wouldn't have let her do it. But she said, like, no, I can do it. And she jumped straight into it. So... Confidence is really important. And so if that's something you struggle with, think about ways how you can develop your confidence uh, and really lean into that. And he looks confident, doesn't he? He's standing there, he's like, I'm confident, I can help you. So these are some of the questions that are really good to ask. So how do you find your target audience? So ideally, it's someone you would work with for free. So who would you do it just for free? Because if you're getting starting with online coaching as well, it's often a good way to get into it by doing some free coaching for people you know and asking them for testimonials. So think about who would you love working with and who would you do it with for free? And then think about what are your experiences? So are you your own target market? I'm gonna give you an example in a moment, um, but these are some of the things to think about. And are you confident that you can provide them with the solutions that they need? Because if you have those three things in place, it's gonna make this journey a lot simpler. So here's a case study. So this is Lighthearted Leaders. This is a community that I set up and um, it connects leaders who um, are wanting to help other people who want to have a space where they can share what's going on for them and and have the conversations that are going on in their head now in this example and it completely amplifies what i've been saying i set this community up on the back of being an online course and i said who wants to keep connected and so i started at these zoom calls every week and i did it for free so that completely embodies the whole thing. I did it for free. I did it for six months for free. And then the community came to me and said, Claire, we want to pay you, which is actually the ideal business model where the clients are coming to you. Well, they're not clients, they're people are coming to you. So all these people came to me and said, Claire, we want to pay you. So if you can do that and um, build something that you love doing, and then people want to pay you for it, it's obviously a really, really great way to be in business. Think about what your experiences are and your own target market. So 
the people in this community originally were all on the same online course I was on. So we've got that connection. And my own experiences was I wanted to be around other like-minded people because that's an important thing about being in business and working on your own. And, and if you look at the five people who you surround yourself with, it's likely they are going to be similar and have similar traits to what you have. And so if you're not hanging around people who are um, really helping you reach your best potential, then it's definitely important that you think about your peer group and who you're spending time with. Um, and the other thing is, is, are you confident you can provide the solutions? So I started off with this and I, um, I love bringing people together and I love people having conversations and I love facilitating conversations. So I was super confident that I could bring people together and I did bring people together, but this literally came out of an idea I had one night. And I just thought, hold on a minute, why don't we carry on these conversations? Because all these great people have come together for this online course and then they would just dissipate. But actually over the last 18 months, we've grown and we've connected and we've done business between each other and we've built relationships. And so it's a really, really great business model from that point of view, because it's, it's making a big impact in the world as well as connecting people. So. Uh, Alicia says, could you show again the slide with the three options you can give potential clients to build a relationship? Uh, which slide was that? The three options, was it? This one? Is that the right one? Who do you love working with and would you do it for free? What are your experiences? Are you your own target market? And are you confident you can provide that that solution. I can't read that bit because that market was solutions. Um, let's have a look. Is it not this one? Is it the one before? I don't think it's that one. Hopefully it's that one. So let's have a look. Some more questions. Um, Terry says, in my experience, it can be difficult to move from completely free to paid. You set expectations and many people struggle if you then change the expectations. Yes, definitely. So this, um, this is a little bit about intention. So I actually set this up as, a, as something I wanted to do. I didn't set it up with a business intention. But then it became so good that people wanted to pay and wanted to stay, wanted to grow. So I think that if you have a free experience, a free product, and say you ran this for free, when you built those relationships, then you then need to add on something different. So from this, this became a paid um, membership. However, the membership fee is not high, but if you wanted to make the business model make more money, then add on maybe masterminding. So people can join a mastermind group or you could, I could market online courses to these people because they know me and they trust me and they want to learn from me. So that's definitely true, Terry. And I totally agree with you. Because if you say, right, this is for free, and then suddenly you say, actually, we're going to charge you now, people are not going to like that. But my model works like different in the fact that the people in it felt like they were getting so much value, they wanted to pay me. So um, I guess it's not going to happen to everybody. Um, um, How long would you do it for free? I think Janice, that actually leads into the question that I'm talking about, uh, that we were talking about just then. It's, you might want to have a free offering that you do forever for free. So for example, you might have a Facebook group where you give lots of free content and build community and build relationships and it will always remain free. However, then you move people into something like a challenge and then you can build deeper relationships with people who are more interested in going further with you and then you could sell them onto a mentoring program, coaching program, online course, that kind of thing. Um, so that's the kind of thing around that. So you always want to do your research so you find out what people need and um, you can do this in different ways. So what pain points does the audience have? So maybe if you're in the fitness um, world, like we were just saying, Maybe the pain point is people just don't have 
enough time to create meals that will give them the nutrition, for example. But you would know that if that was your niche. So you can use social media, use Facebook groups, et cetera, to research the problems and maybe interview members of your target audience. The other thing is sometimes you need to find ways to, sometimes people don't know what they actually need. They are, um, there's things in life that you know you know, and the things are in life that you know you don't know. But then there's also things in life that you just don't even know about them. So because you don't know about them, they're not in your, in your mindset or in your, in your world, you just don't even know about it. So people, for example, in my community love it and they feel this sense of belonging, but they didn't know that was missing. And they only knew it was missing when they experienced it. So how can people experience what it is that you want to share? And it has to be something that will be um, easy for them to do. And if someone doesn't know they need something, they're not gonna spend a lot of money buying it because they, they don't think they need it. So you need to be, think about different ways. And maybe that's through building relationships through a podcast and sharing things or sharing, um, doing interviews with people who have gone through a journey that you want to take other people through, that kind of thing. So yes, exactly, Louise. You don't know what you don't know, exactly. Um, I don't know which website you mean, Andrew. If you mean the online fitness trainer, I just literally put him into Google. So go on to Google and put in the first person and he comes up. That's why I use them as an example, because it's really clear. Um, but you will get a video recording of this. I don't think I even wrote down his website, I'm not sure. So here's some examples. So this was just, it's a bit unclear but on the thing, but I went onto a Facebook group and you can put in the search, you can search within Facebook groups. And if you put in questions like, does anyone know? or why does this happen? Or how can I? And then people will be asking questions. So it's a really great way to do research because you can um, find out the questions people are asking. So in here we've got, does anyone know of anyone who coaches people how to interview, um, who, who interviews, sorry, I can't read it properly. Does anyone know of anybody who coaches people on how to interview and coach better? So if you are, if you thought, right, okay, lots of people are asking that question, like people are looking for coaches who can help people interview better. So say so podcasts, for example, they're exploding and they have been doing for a few years now. However, are people really good at interviewing? Maybe you are excellent at interviewing. So how about you create coaching, helping podcasters do more um, exciting and more interesting interviews. There you go. There's a business idea just from looking at a Facebook group. Um, someone there is asking about does anyone have any experience on setting up a new course platform? So maybe you have an expert expertise in Kajabi, for example. So I use Kajabi. If you're a real expert on Kajabi, you can join their Facebook group and you can see what questions people are asking. What do people need to learn around Kajabi? What's their main pain points? Do they want more um, help with setting up a website or do they need help with doing landing pages and opt-in forms or whatever it might be? So the more that you lean in, you, the more that you can understand what people might want in your target um, market. That is OK Patch. You are not late, right on time. You didn't miss anything at the beginning, I'm sure. So um, here's some research, to, <laughs> research tools. The first one is kind of surprising, and that is phone people. Literally, sometimes my phone actually rings. I've got so detached from phone ringing. Let me know in the comments if you ring people up or if you're purely texting. Let's see how many people on the call actually ring people. If it rings, it's kind of quite surprising, isn't it? It's like, oh, gosh, someone's on the phone. So, yeah, ring people, speak to them, find out what they want, and tell people as well, because I had this business idea that I wanted to set up, and I started telling people, because once you start telling people, it starts creating that momentum, and then they might say to you, how are you getting on? And if you say, well, I didn't do anything, you sound like a bit of a loser. So that's the thing. Guilty, yeah, Edward, guilty as charged. You don't ring people, do you? I have this joke with a friend of mine, and he rings me. I'm like, oh! ringing me what, what do you think you're doing 
So ask your family and friends, speak to people. If you're in your own community, speak to the people in that community and see what they're looking for, what do they need. And this is what I do in my community all the time. I say, what do you need? What would support you better? Because as much as you think you have these solutions, you need to find out what your target audience actually wants. And then you can create a form. So you could use Google form, which is super easy. Just put it into Google and you'll, it will come up. Um, or you could use a service like Typeform. And Typeform helps you create forms where you can ask questions and get research and find out what a target audience might want. This is a really great tool and it's called answerthepublic.com. And you can have three free searches per day. And so if you want to go into online coaching, you can type it in the top and it will come up with all the questions people are answering around online coaching. So how do I get an online coach? Where do I train to be an online coach? Is online coaching lucrative, et cetera, et cetera. And so this can give you some really good examples of what people are actually looking for and help you understand how you could meet their needs. So here you go, it comes up with this graphic. So who? Which online coaching is best for something grades? Which online coaching is best for, I can't read the last lessons, it's quite small, but it, go, they're all questions. And whatever your niche is, you can go in there and you can find out a lot more about what's going on online. So online is an amazing, amazing place to get answers to things because um, it's all stored in the search engines and there's all these tools that will help us access what people are looking for. So being an online coach or being a coach of any kind is giving people solutions to problems and that's really the foundation of any successful coaching practice. So in my community I provide a place for people to feel supported and to feel that sense of belonging and a shared identity. So it's people who are on the journey together who want to be um, generous with their time and they want to get feedback and they're open to feedback. And that's the kind of, and that's pretty much why it's called like hearted leaders as well. It's about people who want to give back as well as, you know, it's an equal balance of giving and taking. And so that's why it works because people feel seen and heard in that space. And that's what everybody wants. They, they want to feel seen and they want to feel heard and they want to have something that will help them grow as an individual. So how can you provide that growth to people in whatever niche that you choose? You need to stand out because there's lots of coaches, there's lots of businesses. Like how can you connect? And there's standing out, but there's also really being comfortable with who you are as well because you are unique. And my own experience of this is I haven't got too bogged down with what other people are doing. Obviously, sometimes I see things and they're similar to what I've done in the past, but no one's doing it quite like I'm doing it because there's only one of me. So don't get too bogged down and think, oh, there's too many coaches. There's billions of people in the world and we can connect with them through um, the internet. So don't get too, don't let that stop you. Because where you, and I was talking about this at the beginning, where you follow the footsteps and you are really doing something that, feels exciting to you and feels um, fulfilling and all of those aspects, you will attract people who, you attract the right people. And if you look at, often what you're thinking inside will be reflected in what's happening around you. Um, if you go into some deep inner work, which we won't go into today. So if you're going on this journey and grow an online business and or grow your coaching business, you need to think about how you're going to raise your profile because if nobody knows about you, nobody is going to obviously uh, want to work with you. So how can you start regularly sharing on social media and creating content that will showcase your expertise? So if you want to go into, um, still using the fitness example, are you sharing pictures of you at the gym? Are you sharing uh, the food that you're consuming are you doing content where people can see the transformation so there's a really good coach um, or person who's done really well and she's called Mari 
And she is an American, well, she, I don't think she's an American. I think she might be English actually, but she lives in America. And she shares through her social media how she used to be um, unfit and overweight. And then she moved through this fitness journey and she talks about how that helped her mental state as well and how she, and you can see through her transformation. And she shares pictures of her now and she's fit and she's at the gym and that supports, it was all supported on her social media. And then from that, she's gone out and she's created uh, nutritional drinks and things to support her business and created a whole brand on top of that. So that has just literally gone from someone sharing their journey um, through YouTube and how they met their fitness goals and how they've changed their life through eating better and doing exercise. And through sharing that, she's created a, a really successful business. So build relationships in your network, speak to people, uh, connect with them, build relationships, lead, like I often say, with giving as opposed to trying to take from people. So don't lead with how most people lead with on LinkedIn, where they're just telling you you'd love to attend their amazing seminar when you've not heard of them. It doesn't work like that. Would you do that normally if they were in the same room as you? You wouldn't just walk up to someone and say, come along to my seminar. It's not the way you would, would you? You'd say, hi, how are you? Where did you come from today? Are you enjoying this, et cetera, et cetera? That's how we build relationships, so don't forget that. Um, and look for opportunities to be interviewed. So can you be interviewed on different podcasts, talking about what you want to talk about, sharing what you're doing in your life, that kind of thing? Because all of those things will really help you build up your network, build up your profile, and people will get to know you. And especially like if you're around people. So in my example, for example, when I was around Simon, you know, I'd have photographs of him and I, doing the seminars together and I would share them on Facebook and things because that would raise my profile um, in the early days. So creating a brand identity. Now we're not going to really get into all of this today but um, it's really important and I've learned this over the years that it, it's really important to know what you stand for and what do you believe in because there is sometimes a tendency that you think you've got to mould and be like other people especially if you're emulating people who are, as you would perceive, more successful than you, you think, okay, well, I need to be more like them in order to be successful. But that is not necessarily the case. You need to be more you because then things are more, it's more in alignment. So if you're doing things that don't really feel in alignment with you, it, you're going to have resistance. It's going to be harder to do. So the more you can do things that you really resonate with and which really feel alive to you, the better it's going to be for you. And think about what tone of voice you will use. And this will probably naturally come through. So if you've been on my webinars before, sometimes I'm, you know, I'm naturally wanting to joke around um, and say things like, I'm not super serious. And so if you read any of my social media, there might be aspects of that that aren't super serious. That's just my tone of voice. Um, and sometimes you feel, you don't feel comfortable. So if, if, um you like if you think about innocent smoothies they have a whole aspect of how they write on the sides of their bottles and it's fun and they talk in a fun way and it just kind of really reson resonates with their brand and people know it's their brand because they write in in a kind of fun way and talk about squashing or squidging strawberries and whatever else it's not a formal it's not a formal list of ingredients so have a look at say smoothies innocent smoothies and see how they use a tone of voice. So don't procrastinate when you're going to move into something new because often you will use things that you think you need just to stop you moving forward. So you'll be like, oh, I haven't got a logo yet or I haven't got a website. So my community started without a logo, without a website. It had a different name to start with. And then as it became more successful, we had a given we've got a name and it still hasn't got a proper logo it's got one I created on Canva but it's working and it's growing and it's making positive change so if you just if I was still thinking about what logo to do that opportunity would have gone so don't just pause on something like that um, as I said earlier start with some free sessions and use those testimonials and feedback and then you can um, start charging so if you do it a few times 
and then people say yeah I really got some great results from working with you you say are you happy for me to quote that and then you can start charging for the next people so start charging and the thing is is if you feel a little bit nervous about charging remember that if think about it, if you're going to buy um if I had two things here like this booklet here this notebook and this phone and the phone was five pounds and or you could buy the same phone for five thousand let's say that and you would think that the five thousand pound phone was much better than the five pound phone and so if you translate that um bye Alwyn thanks for coming well um if you translate that into say coaching if someone doesn't pay for something they don't value it as much but if they paid a lot more for it they would think it was much more valuable and so you're actually doing a favor to people by charging them so um an experience comes with actions not thought because you never actually get or understand as much as, as when you until you start um taking those actions and getting the feedback and so things come up all the time for me in my business and I had something this week that came up in it, but I that that only came up because I take an action. And if I just thought about it in my head, I'd never even thought about that coming up as an issue. So get a mentor and support network. So this really, really helps you because coaches always have their own mentors because it really helps you. Um, like I say, like jumpstart what you're doing because people have done it before and so you can get their knowledge you can ask them what they think and all the rest of it so i've had quite a few mentors so here's some of my mentors so simon alexi daniel Queensley, martin norbury robert richmond justin jackie shah like these are jules see like all of these people have been my mentors and actually i didn't even put all of them on because um, there's so many I think there's 30 I've had um, and they have all helped me and every time I share like an event like this something will come from what one of my mentors um, has shared with me so how do you find mentors well there's um, lots of different ways some of mine have come through um, seeing them share on social media some have come through um, seeing a tweet or something um and following through on that um my experience going mental let's have a look how do you find mentors so there's lots of different ways so youtube i found mentors i saw a tweet once and found a mentor you might get personally introduced uh you might have read their book or they might be in your network or maybe you're just curious so some of mine i've just been curious about them and i thought actually i really want to work with you Recommendations are great as well. So be careful when you're investing in people. Um, but so do your due diligence, see who else has worked with them, see if you trust them before you make an investment in them. Remember, never invest in a mentor who hasn't invested in themselves. Because if you are coaching people, but you, you're like, well, I don't do that for, for myself, then if you don't invest in yourself, how can you be giving value to other people? So, um, because that's the way it works. Invest in yourself and others will invest in you as well. And you're growing as a person as well. So um, think about your social circles as well. Like, do you have people who support you? Because it's really, really important. Sometimes it can be difficult when you're in business um, and you don't have a support circle around you. So it's really important for your emotional well-being as well as your business success that you have people around you who are supportive um yeah exactly so like ed was saying like lots of dog breeders who charge a hundred hundreds of pounds for selling a puppy yes yeah, so if you give it away for free the buyer will not take care of the puppy exactly like premium and value definitely a puppy um, explanation so um um my my child seriously i cannot believe it this <laughs> is like quick screen time screen time so the question is how do you move another mentor if your current mentor doesn't work for you well it depends what kind of um relationship you have as well because if you if you've signed up to something and you can't get out of it um you might be in some kind of legal thing but 
have you, is, Louise, have you got a mentor that's not really working for you? Is that the issue? I don't really know. Um, but yeah, let me know um, whether you've got an issue with that and then I will answer it for you. But obviously it depends. And that if someone's not working for you, um, maybe you need to have that conversation with you. And if they are a, um, if they are, um, you know, a credible mentor, they will know it's not working and they will be happy to move on. Um, hello, Mr. Simon Coulson is in the house. He will be on in a moment. So everyone get very excited. Um, I'll give you a small break in a minute before, you help, before he comes on. But before he comes on, I'm just going to share a few more points, and that is how can you scale? So if you do this online coaching business, you can then, um, and it's working for you, one-to-one -one is really consuming and it should be your most expensive product. So that's the thing that's going to take your most time up because it's one-to-one -one and it's lots of time. So if you worked with Simon, it probably cost you like, I don't know, I don't know how expensive it is nowadays, 20,000 a minute or something. Like, but however, you could get me and I would not be that much a minute. I don't know how much he is anymore, but that's the thing. So he scaled his business. So he's got online trainings. He's got coaches doing trainings for him. So lots of his mentors will speak to a coach like me instead of speaking to him. So that's a way you can scale. So he can still be doing his singing and we are doing the coaching for him. So that's kind of like an ideal model. 